Hi, it's me, Flo. Oh, what happened? Okay, I think we are fine. As you can see, we are in my studio. That's because I have to shoot a few hair extensions product shots. And as I was working, I was like, this is a bit of a challenge. And that's because, you know, hair is hard to work with. That's when I thought, why am I not showing you guys how I came up with this idea to get good shots of hair extensions. So that's what this video is going to be about. We are, as I said, I think I said that we are in my studio here. It's a home studio. I am so lucky that I have this space. Don't worry, I will give you some budget-friendly things that you can get right now so you can get started today. You can build something similar to this at home and you can do this by yourself. I don't have a lot of experience with photography. Well, I have a little bit, but it's been a long time since I've been in the studio and shooting, so it was little challenging i'm not i'm not gonna lie i will try to make this as easy to follow along and i will talk you through everything that i do and what else oh by the way i don't know if you noticed but i am shooting at my iphone this time because as you see here my up oh, over there my main camera is quite busy at the moment so i don't have yeah i don't have that so that's why this quality is not the best but as long as you can see and you can hear i think i think we'll be good yeah <laughs> all right so let's get started we are going to work with these hair extension ponytails i have already shot these and we are going to move on to these two and we are going to place it right there in the middle and here is the equipment. So I'm going to go and do a little short intro for each and everything so you know what we are working with. Okay, so I have three continuous lights. They are all from Generay. These two are the mono lights, and that one is the powerhouse, which means that this one is the most powerful. And because they are continuous lights, it is a video light, so it will always be lit up. And we are also working with this Baya flashlight. It is a photography light. It is perfect. I love this one. It is my favorite. If you are on a tight budget, the key takeaway from this setup is this light. It is the Dynalite Baya B4 flashlight. This is a badass light and you will only need this one and some paper white backdrop or anything that's white that you can have underneath your products. I'm so bummed right now because I just found out that Dynalite went out of business. That means it is discontinued and you can no longer get a hold of the Bio B4. <sighs> I love that light. I had it for, I think it's turning five years old now. And it's still going strong and I wanted to share it with you guys, but instead I have listed something similar to the Baya before so you can get something else. You're also working with this camera, which is the Sony A7R 3 I believe. Not sure, but I'm gonna link everything that I mentioned in this video down in the description box so if you are curious just go and look there and you will find everything and we are going to use just a white paper like it is cut out from this <laughs> paper backdrop and we are going to lay it down here and here's the hair and we are going to straight it out just to be sure that it will look perfect for this shoot because everything will show if it's not perfect it's not going to be a good picture so we are going to work on the hair and then we're gonna take the photo right there as you can see i don't have a lot of space to work with so i had to be creative and i came up with this idea that i had to attach the lights to the walls 
so I could save up some working space and yeah, had the freedom to move around. And I forgot to say that this cable is also attached to my computer. So whenever I take a photo, I can see exactly what I'm working with and I can do the necessary adjustments to make sure that the photo turns out perfect. By the way, this right there is just the screen. I have a really old iMac. I think it's like 15 years old or something. So yeah, it is not the photography, it's just the screen. Before we start, we need to do a few preparations to make sure everything is perfect. And what you need is a hairbrush like this. Google Translate says it's came. I thought it was comb. Anyways, you see what I'm using? Yes, this one. And you need a scissor because trust me, you will need to cut out some hair just to make sure everything looks perfect. Even though I'm not a hairstylist. <laughs> and you will need this. It is like something for your hair to look, you know, as long as you put like something in the hair, it will look so much better. And this last one is optional. You can use a remote control to like sit here, relax, and just click, and you can just work straight on the computer and see how it looks. Because what we don't want to do is to go back and forth and touch the camera because we want it to be at the exact same spot the entire time. Um, so that's when this one is, yeah, comes in handy. <laughs> Now, this is the tricky part, and you are going to spend a lot of time trying to figure out a way to style this hairpiece, and you will need patience. I'm just gonna say it right now. I like to do this, but there's no right or wrong way to do this, but I like to wrap the hair, twist it like this a few times, drop it to the ground, and you kind of have this foundation you are going to work from and we like to have the motion of the hair because we are creating a hair piece that will look like it's blowing in the wind and to get this motion we need to first drag it out like slightly you have to be gentle once you got into the fullness that you like you are going to make sure you follow the lines like this, pull it up because we like to create some texture. This translates really nicely to photography because then you see like the motion of the hair. It looks beautiful if you spend some time pulling up and like working on perfecting this piece. This is the ultimate patient test. It took me a good amount of time and practice before I got anywhere near looking okay. So yeah, you will be spending a lot of time adjusting and trust me, everything shows in the photography if you don't do it here and you will save a lot of time in post-production. So do this one right, okay? <laughs> and do not use this brush to brush through the hair because we want the hair to look natural and like it's blowing in the wind. And when you do that, it just it doesn't look that good. So the only thing this brush is allowed to do is to sharpen up the edges because that is a must or else it will look frizzy and yeah. But that's the finished touch before you are taking the photo. I think we are on to something. So I'm gonna take a photo 
and see how it turned out. <sighs> I'm gonna wait a few seconds because my Mac is so old. <laughs> okay, so um, this part does not look good. Need to close that one. Um, not sure about this wave and this part need adjusting. So gonna try it one more time. And if you're wondering, these are my settings. I'm shooting at a shutter speed of 1, 125. My aperture is at 11 to get those crisp, clear photos. And my ISO is at 100. Let's see. Hmm. Well, I think we are getting closer, but it's just, uh, I'm not sure. It's all right. It's what it is. It's just all right. And this is what is going to drive you crazy because you're going to spend so much time <laughs> trying to make the hair look good. I got all of the files right here and I'm gonna show you real quick how I edit the photos. And my rule of thumb is to always go for the last image. That means this one was the one that I was the most satisfied with. So we're gonna drag that one to Photoshop. And because I spent some time getting my settings right, I don't have to do much work here in Camera Raw, but I'm gonna show you anyways what I would like to do with this photo. I'm gonna go to the white. I'm gonna drag it up just like that and the highlights. Yeah, something like that. You probably didn't see any difference, but anyways, we're gonna open the object. Gonna take a few seconds. I have to rotate it. You probably think like, what should I do? But it's not completely white. So what we have to do, I like to go here and choose the color selection. And here I like to click, you can see, on the white that's the one that we want to select and here you can adjust how much of a selection it should be making um it really depends on each photo and here i would be happy with yeah something like this and i'm gonna click ok and you see it's going to make a selection and what I like to do is I like to go to adjustments and go to curves. And I'm going to pull this to the side so you can see. Um, I like to bring this up. Did you see that? It got even brighter and slightly down. So the whole purpose is to get the background to white. And just like that, it's... oh. Sorry, <laughs> it's um, going to make the background wide without losing, oh, sorry, I keep pressing. It's hard when you're filming with one hand and using your left hand. Um, so yeah, you can see I'm not losing any details around the edges and that's the whole point because if you were to mask and spend a lot of time doing that, it's hard to make it look natural. Of course, sometimes I have to go in and manually mask and, you know, move the edge, some edges. But for this photo, I think it looks fine. And sometimes I have to straighten up the product. But as you can see, it looks really straight so i don't think i have to do anything more than just click save so that's how i do this it's so easy and i think anyone can do this if you just practice and just try it yourself i am so tired so i am going to show you a few of my favorites that i've shot this far and yeah, I am proud of what I've managed to do by myself here in my home studio. And if I can do it, you can do it. So I hope this video was good to watch. I hope I taught you something you didn't know. And if you have any questions about my setup or how I do a certain thing, just let me know in the comments. I would love to chat with you and yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching and if you did, please make sure to 
like this video and subscribe uh, because I am going to post every single week. Well, not going, I am posting every single week. So I hope to see you in my next video and hopefully in a better quality video because next time I'm going to use my actual camera. So until then, I will talk to you later. How do I do this? <laughs> Hi, baby Calvin. I didn't know I was going to take some product shots of you, huh? He loves being in the spotlight. <laughs> and these other two, yeah, they just want cuddles.